This week on The Real House Fist of Dubai. Because I put you that's in a bad situation. Because I, I said agree. that to you privately. I just agree. To ask you I agree. If she said what I thought she said. I did. Where? Okay. What was I saying? What was that's the voice note? Me. You said I'm not a fan of Caroline Brooks. What the f Yo, what is up, everybody, and welcome back. Listen, we got to talk about the new episode of The Real Housewives of Dubai. That's season two, episode eight. This was an amazing episode full of drama. And I was actually at the edge of my seat. So let's get right into this. So we start with Sergio and Caroline. It is the morning and they're waking up from their housewarming party. They are so proud of their home. So what happened last night, Brooks making a mockery out of their home is really upsetting. They say that Brooke set the tone the moment she walked in with her witchcraft, aka the sage. And the whole time she was bringing bad vibes to the party. Stanbury understands that Rafi was sticking up for his wife as any man who actually loves his wife would. But Caroline feels that everyone owes her an apology, honestly. And she's right. And Sergio is right. You don't go and cause a ruckus at someone else's house. Do that at your own house, not at mine. But on the bright side, the girls are going to their trip to Bali. So we see the ladies get ready and pack up for the trip. Lisa is leaving a little calendar with all of the activities that the kids need to do every day. She leaves that to her husband, but his mom's flying in anyway, so he's going to have help. Lisa does wonder how this trip will be because the last time they were all together, it was ghetto, she says. We see Rafi and Talene. First of all, Rob says he's embarrassed. That's never, ever happened before. But they say that, you know, Caroline Brooks knows how to push people's buttons and knows what buttons to push. To Talene, yeah, being called fake and nasty, those comments were very hurtful. But what's really, what really bothered her was the beggar comment. That really did it for her. And she says that out of 10 years of the friendship, she's never seen Brooks react like this and it's really surprising and she says that she's scared of going to bali which i think is a little bit of exaggeration so we see brooks also get ready and then she facetimes sarah i guess they're besties now brooks says that she's thought about not going but she says that she feels betrayed by talene and um sarah says that no she should definitely go so the next morning the girls arrive at the airport and then sergio arrives with caroline and they say that sergio is coming to bali with them he brought his suitcases and everything and ayan is like why is he coming with us this is a girl's trip but it was actually a joke. He actually is going to Spain. So he did need to actually go to the airport. Um, and he actually left Caroline a poster of himself. Listen, Sergio is the comedic relief of the show. He really is. So all the girls are there, including Saba. And they're waiting for Brooks. They don't know where she is. And she's not answering the phone. Stanbury is secretly happy that she's not answering. I mean, can you blame her? So she's nowhere to be found. So they leave without her. And they get on that flight. And after some hours, they finally get there. Bali is beautiful. And Sarah says that she goes there every once in a while to heal and all this stuff that she keeps talking about. Then they arrive at this beautiful mansion villa where they will be staying. Lisa tells them all to get dressed right away because they have a dinner with an exclusive celebrity chef that she was able to get. So they did just that and they look great. They go outside. Sarah says that because Bali is about healing and growing, she wants all of them to set the intention that they will fix broken relationships, get to know others, and if they're someone who they already love, then leave loving them even more. So after that, everyone agrees, but then they're like, okay, for real though, where is Brooks? Lisa says, well, listen, I had made a comment. I, I had made a joke before the trip that it would be better if one of them didn't show up, if it, if they weren't able, if they weren't going to be able to fix things. Talking about Talene and Brooks. But Talene says, well, I honestly did want to fix things with her. So then Ayan says, really, you did? Because I heard that you were chasing her around Stanbury's house, asking her, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Talene says, I want no drama right now. Don't even go there. You're being dirty right now. And Ayan says, no, I'm just telling you what I heard. Talene says, no, I did not chase her around. And it was very pro it was very traumatic. But they, they squashed it. Um, then a guy comes with a giant wheel of Parmesan cheese to make pasta. And Bali 
that surprised me. They ask Sarah if she has introduced her boyfriend to her parents, and she says no, not yet. And for like the 100th time, the girls tell Sarah that she should live with her boyfriend, and Sarah and Saba have to explain yet again that's not even an option in Islam. Technically, that's not even an option in Christianity either, but you know, people in Islam, most of them actually take their religion seriously. So, Again, she had, they had to remind them. So anyway, they go back to the inside to the villa, and they're just dancing. Ayan's a little drunk, so she's all over the place, but it was great vibes. And then Brooks gets there. She looked great, I'll give her that. She says that she thought about not coming, but when she woke up, she changed her mind. Talin did hug her along with everyone else except Stanberry, and the good vibes continued. They kept dancing and stuff, so that was it for the night. I think Caroline wanted to have this huge entrance, but it really wasn't that. But like I said, that was it for the night. The next morning, they're waking up. Talene FaceTimes her husband, and then Sarah goes up to Brooke's room to tell her that she really was worried about her not answering her phone. And she also says that, you know, she wants that uh, she tells her about the intention that they sent. So then Brooks tells Sarah that she's going to hold Talene accountable for being a two faced and backstabbing and a potster and fake. Yet here was Miss Intention Sarah Amadani, the fraud, hearing Brooks say all this and saying nothing to her. So again, I don't. Uh, Listen, Sarah is the biggest con artist. So then the group gets ready and they go on a boat. Now, I was thinking any housewife fan knows you put ladies on a boat, it's going to be chaotic. But, you know, they, it was actually good. They were taking a bunch of pictures. Brooks is still going around to anyone willing to listen, talking about Celine. Ayan tells her just talk to her, but Brooks says that she's not ready. However, Brooks does talk to Stanberry. Brooks says that, you know, she's on this spiritual healing journey and Stanberry says that the healing is not working. Sarah is always talking for her. And she just feels like things are worse than before she went on this journey. She even says you might need to stop the healing because you were better before. Also, Caroline Brooks is going around saying that she got there on a private jet from Dubai to Bali. No one's believing that. <laughs> then, you know, they got off the boat and got on the water. And it was nice that Talene did have some fun with Caroline Brooks. So that's always great to see. Okay, but wait, you guys. My diagnosis on Sarah being fake was correct. Because get this. A few days ago, Ayan stumbled upon a recording of Sarah talking about her new bestie Brooks not so positively. And I'm sure that will be shown later. Okay, so later they went back. It's much more later now, so, and it is time for dinner. So Brooks, once they're at the dinner table, says, You guys, Caroline said to me earlier in the boat that I should stop with my healing because it's not working. Lisa Milan jumps in there so quickly and says, Why would you say that? Why would you want your friend to be stuck in a toxic place? And Stanbury says, No, it's not like that, but it's not the same Brooks that I used to talk to. She's changing. So here comes Sarah being the Brooks translator, saying, Well, maybe you should make an effort to learn the new her. And Stanbury says, You speak for her, Sarah, and you're doing it right now. It would be much more easier to talk to her and not have you speak for her. And then annoying Saba chiming in as well, saying that Sarah doesn't speak for her. It's called a friendship. It's called being friends. Sarah is there as her friend. So Stanbury says, Okay, 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 wait a minute. We want to talk about friendship. Let's hold everybody accountable then. Let's play the voice note, Ayan. So Ayan's like, oh, okay, we're doing this? And you could, listen, Ayan looked nervous as hell. Ayan says, I have a voice note of you, Sarah, saying that you think Brooks should take more accountability. Now, Ayan turns to her right and looks at Lisa immediately and says, I'm sorry. You guys, Lisa was the one who sent Ayan the voice note of Sarah talking about Brooks. Lisa says, you're messy, that's effed up, I sent you that privately. Sarah is like, wait, what voice note is this? What was I saying? And Talene says, in the voice note, you said that you were not a fan of Caroline Brooks. Lisa was mad and says that she cannot trust Ayan anymore. And that was the end of the episode. So, 
Ooh, the drama was so good, you guys. The tea was piping hot. But I want to go back to this. Everybody's so riled up right now about the recording, about what Sarah said, about Brooks, about Ayan playing it, about showing it to the other ladies. I want us to go back to the root of the problems. Lisa Milan. And I... I'm going to go back to even last week. Even the whole fight between Caroline Brooks and Talene and her husband. I, Lisa Milan started all that because she's the one that went to Talene to tell her about the beggar comment. So I want you guys to notice that Lisa is the slithering snake. I've never liked her since season one. And it's showing her true colors that she was willing to record Sarah and then send it to Ayon. So no, I can't be mad at Ayon for betraying um, Lisa's trust because Lisa has betrayed everyone's trust. And I can see why Chanel doesn't want to be friends with her anymore. But anyways, you guys, that was the end of the episode. So you guys let me know what is your opinions on this whole voice note thing. Um, and, and you know what? Another thing, this also proves... That all of the women from the Real Housewives of Dubai are messy towards each other. And they will all backstab each other. So it's kind of sad, but it's kind of entertaining. So y'all, let me know what your thoughts were. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch y'all next time. You have a great one. Bye.